Hello, welcome to video four. What is material? The sphere mask. So let's go ahead. We'll run through a quick little example here of what my sphere mask does. And we will see how we use it. So let me adjust this slightly. For example, I've got this set up as a material instance so I can adjust this in real time. We have this cube here. This cube is affected by the sphere mask itself. I have a material set up right here using a sphere mask. Now, if I'm to get closer to the cube, you're going to start seeing parts of it being removed. Now, if you notice, they are shaped like a sphere. Basically, I have it set up where the camera, which is what I'm looking through, is emitting a sphere mask. And that sphere mask is removing anything with that material that it hits. So you can see that here. Now, if I was to adjust this slightly, we would get something more like this for a more feathered effect. So it's not completely, you know, you can see it as it's slightly going in. So let, let's see how this works, first of all. So we have our sphere mask here. Our sphere mask has four inputs. Two of them can be adjusted inside the node itself, and then two of them take in parameters. So in terms of parameters, we have our A and our B. Basically, this is going to be where's the originator, and where is the other part of it? Basically, A is the position of the point to check. Where are we checking our position? And B is what are we checking it against? So, for example, A here would be the material of this cube right here. B is going to be the position of our camera. So, it's going to check from our camera position, which is B, to the surface of the material, and it's going to check if the radius and the hardness are affected. Radius is how large, in terms of radius, our sphere is. Hardness is how hard is our edge on the sphere in terms of removing it. So let me go ahead and unhook a couple of these so we can actually see what we mean by the hardness. So if I'm go back in here, let this compile. Now I've removed my emissive. Now as we get closer, you'll notice it's basically cutting it off. If I'm to pull up my instance here, and we'll go ahead and make it a lot. Wow, I don't know how I got it this big. We'll make it a lot smaller. Okay, here we go. And we'll move this over. And we have a hardness and our radius. Now if we have a hardness of one on this one, you're gonna see it's affected right here. This is our hardness of one, which means we have a 100% hard edge, and we're going to cut out exactly the size of our sphere. If we adjust our radius, you can see it adjusting completely. Now, if we adjust our hardness down, it's not going to cut out or become 100% transparent, for our example, unless it hits the inner hardness percentage ratio. Now it's kind of hard to visualize unless we do a couple things. So what we've done here is we've set this up as our emissive color. Basically, keep in mind emissive is going to be, in this case, a zero or one based on if it's hard or not hard. That's how this is going to be set up. So that's why once our shader finishes compiling, that's why we saw that soft white edge as we got closer. As we adjust our hardness, you can see the white edge going away. We're 100% hard. And if we make our hardness softer, you can see this soft edge here where this is our sphere itself, the outer edge based on a radius of 100, let's say. 100. And then this inner is our 80, well, 90% technically. Oops, that would be hardness of 90. So let's go 0.9. There we go. So we have a little 10% gap there. And for our demonstration purposes, we are filling that in with an emissive color. If I was to drop this down to, let's say, lower, you can then see here we have a hardness and a radius and things like that. So let's go ahead and keep that as is, and let's go ahead and see another way in terms of using it. Uh, we have this set up as, oops, not find, let's save this. 
We're going to go ahead and set this up with a location that we are going to feed in from another object. Basically, I've set up a material parameter collection and I've set this up to be a location. Previously, we were using the camera position to determine where our sphere is coming from. What we're going to do now is use something else called location to determine where our sphere is originating. And what we're doing with that is, once it's finished compiling, I've created a blueprint. All this blueprint in is, all this blueprint is, is a sphere. And I put this little transparent green texture on it so we can see it. And what it does is every time we move the sphere, we call the construction script. And that construction script updates the location for the material with the location of our sphere. So in terms of how it works, if we take our sphere and we move it, you will see it starts affecting this material. You can see our sphere itself in terms of its size. And this is one of those issues. I don't have this completely tweaked, but basically I need to change our radius down to 50. And now you can actually see it working better. We'll change it to hardness of one and you can actually see exactly what I'm showing. So we have our sphere here. Our sphere is cutting out based on our material. It's masking out this material based on the size of our sphere that we're passing through it, as well as the position that we've told to pass through. So as you can see, we kind of get this chopped up, chopped out look. Now this is how you would use, for example, if you wanted to have like a Diablo type camera where it's cutting out part of your meshes, you could use a sphere mask. Or for say, for example, you wanted light. Well, you could have it where it only shows the things that you are walking through. For example, this could be our player and we could have a much larger radius, obviously. But let's say we went like that. And you could have it where this is like a light fog or something, something you can't see through. And you can only see as you're, whoops, move the wrong thing. Whereas you're walking, things start occluding and becoming opaque, not opaque, translucent. And as you're walking, things start disappearing. So that is something you could do with the sphere mask. And all I did was feed in a third party parameter for my location. So. This is all done based on the fact that I'm taking this and removing it from our opacity mask. If I was to change this back to, let's say, let's flip this. Let's not make it a one minus. Let's try this. And keep in mind, I'm using this as a mask, not an opacity. If I did opacity, you would see instead of just a solid removal, you'd see that slight, um, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. The, you'd see the hardness come into effect. So here, as you can see, here is my cube. We don't see anything. As I move my player closer, now all of a sudden we can see our cube. Let's make this, let's make this bigger. Let's make this more like a person. Let's try that and let's try something like this. I've set this to a 0.5 for the hardness and a 200 for the radius. Now pretending we're our player. We're walking through and all of a sudden we can start seeing our level. Now this isn't in a way to do occlusion. You're not supposed to use occlusion for this, but it's useful for special effects. Maybe you want, this is your flashlight. And as you move your flashlight, you can all of a sudden see things. Obviously, you know, make this down to a, let's make this more of a 50. And now as you move your flashlight, all of a sudden you can see something with your flashlight. And it gives you a nice little effect as you're moving it across. We could take our material, we could make this, instead of mast, we could make it translucent, feed our opacity into there like that, let it recompile. Go ahead and pull it back out. And now you can see, of course, it's got to recompile. There we go. And as you can see now, when I was talking about our fall off, you can see how we have a partial fall off for our inner sphere. If I was to adjust the instance here, make our hardness back to one, you can see we have our completely hard sphere with our circle here. And of course, as I adjust our hardness, we start getting our lighter fall off. 
adjust our radius, we get our bigger. So here you can see how they work together. So that is what our sphere mask does. It basically masks out something in a sphere shape. You can obviously input anything you want for the A and the B, and then you adjust your radius and your hardness based on what you're expecting to see. So if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below.